getting the base cabinets put in here, it's going fairly smoothly. I knew this was my high spot right in here, so I didn't have any shims on this side. Um, had a couple shims down along the base here and a couple shims there. And then I um, only had to put one shim on the back of this corner. But then the corner cabinets being a little bit of a challenge. Um, I did plan on this being away from the wall. So I know our stove actually sticks out a little bit farther than normal. So I wanted to eat up some of that uh, space by having this gap here a little bit deeper. So this is an inch and three eighths. I'm going to basically get a uh, two by four and plane it down until it fits in there. Run all the way across and I'll have to run a piece back along that side so that the countertop has something to rest on that back corner. But once this one is in, I can go ahead and build the last three cabinets which is going to be another corner cabinet just like this one will sit here and then there's two 30 inch uh, drawer cabinets that come out. All right, the basics of the kitchen is done. Uh, these are not put in place yet. They're just sitting where they will sit. When I get everything in, I still need to put my PVC strips along the bottom of them. And then I'm going to uh, bolt some brackets to the ground. I was going to use wood, but I think the brackets will work a little bit better. So, um, still a little thing on these RTA cabinets. Every box, I mean, every box was different. When I opened it up, nothing was packed the same. Um, like for example, this one that I just did, I mean, the screws were different, parts were different. You can see this one's got this router lying along there. This one doesn't. This one down here has got a really, had like a thin bottom board. This one again had a really thick one. So that's the difference between this bottom board and then this little thing right here, which is basically nothing. But I left those out um, because with the radiant floors or underneath these cabinets, I want to have a way for the heat to escape. So if I put this panel in here, it would just trap heat underneath. So this way the heat can come up, it can come out through here. Um, the backs are open too. I'll figure out a way to get airflow through there. Luckily both of them were like that. Of course this one looks like it's about three inches. This one looks like it's about two and a half inches tall so that may throw me off a little bit. Then the backs of these are different too. You know this one is just one of these thin pieces. This is a whole thick piece. This one's actually built a little better but it was completely different than all the other ones um, that I put together. So. So we got our dishwasher, stove, the range hood, and this is just a, a cheap, cheap range hood. For a 42 inch range hood, range hood, that was, I think it was $140, and most of them are well over 200 just to start on a cheapo one. But what I figured is, um, you know, it's up, you're not gonna really care about it anyways. They had all these sleek curve designs and stuff like that. I just didn't think they didn't really fit with what we had. So this is cheap and it's boxy. Um, I've already set it up there and it'll work fine. But anyways, kitchen is pretty much getting there now. So I'm at the point where I need to, again, put the PVC strips along the bottom. So I get it raised up off the floor a little bit. And the main reason for that, well, there's two reasons really. But one is so you can see that the flooring has a place to slip underneath the uh, toe kick there. Um, and that will have a you know, somewhat of a seamless uh, part when it runs up to it. Uh, this floor will look seamless. Like look, it looks like it runs underneath it when it actually doesn't. So I've got to do that. It also keeps it a quarter inch off the ground. So in case any water gets dribbled or things like that, it should not get above that PVC hopefully. Uh, so it won't get water damage soaking up into the... Uh, the cabinets themselves. So these have a nice finish to them, but I want to keep them extra safe. So this is a roll of carpet tape. It's what they roll out on carpet when it's brand new, they want people to step on it. So this roll is something like 30 feet for, I think it's about $12. What this has done is basically put a plastic coating over the top of your drawer inside so if anything does happen to drip on there and sit for a little while it's not going to stain or it's not going to um, cause damage to the drawer like it would if it was just regular straight up wood smoothing out some of these imperfections is pretty easy 
So I'm doing this to all of the cabinets and all or all the uh, like drawers um, below the sink. I'll use the thicker material, and then uh, anywhere where stuff will be sitting on top of it, we'll get that plastic layer. Got my cabinet laid out on the floor here. Um, anyways, I got chalk line still, so got them laid out, and then I still got to put my two by four back along there. I'm gonna go ahead and get the vent hood up. So rarely do these holes ever line up with anything. So what I did is I measured off to see where um, this piece of wood is that I can tie into. So I'm gonna have one here. One there, one there, and the same thing on the other side. And I'll probably try and get one back in here too. So I've gone ahead and measured those off onto the back side. Go ahead and drill some holes, and they should go up pretty easy. I got the vent hood all installed and then still haven't laid out anything over here yet, but I'll get there. So, a six inch pipe going up there. I just gotta get the cord to plug it in and I can actually use it. I also went ahead and ordered some uh, LED dimmable lights to put in there so it should come in in a day or two. But that wall's pretty well 100% done for the most part. think about this for a little bit and then looking at my drawings I should have a line radiant heat line about right here so luckily they run this direction so I can put uh, anchor bolts all the way down along this back side not to worry about anything so I need to go well first things first I've got to set these cabinets where they're gonna be and then level them so I know exactly where the wall is gonna be and I know exactly how tall the wall is gonna be so I don't want to build this wall and then I find out that the concrete bows up or down a little bit, which I know it does, and then my top of this sticks up or down. 
So I'm going to get all the cabinets set where they're supposed to go and leveled, um, not screwed together, just temporarily put together with spring clips and things like that. And then I can build the wall behind it. I got to pour down the cabinets back in. And it's looking pretty good. Um, the only thing I may have messed up on is right down here. That gap is a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. So, don't quite know what happened there. Um, I have no clue. So, anyways, I'm pretty sure if I did a, a big trim piece down here, I would cover that up. That's probably what I'm going to have to do. But everything else is in there and everything worked out the way I hoped it would where that sits right on top. So here's a good example or a good view of what I did. There's that quarter inch filler piece, that PVC piece I tested the bottom of all the cabinets. So that raised it up enough to where my flooring could just slip right underneath there. And that way I wasn't trying to cut it along this seam and I would have had to put some sort of trim piece along that. This gives it a much, much cleaner look. So I've got the uh, last couple set of base cabinets tied together and I just got to tie them to the floor which is a little nerve-wracking because right there is where my pipe should be for the radiant floor and there is my bracket so within an inch or two on each side of error puts me very very close to where that may be and I'm only using inch and a quarter uh, screws down into there so that shouldn't get close to where the um, pipe would even be. The pipe should be at least two and a half, if not three inches down, but it's just always concerning getting that close to it. But I have went ahead and set my depth on my bit. So you put a piece of tape around it. You take your 
drill your screw and you put it up next like that you can see I've got probably about a sixteenth of an inch maybe an eighth of an inch there before I hit my uh, piece of tape and also I have the thickness of the bracket so typically you want to have a little bit of headroom in there because you're going to have dust and debris and stuff like that you're not going to be able to get out so you just screw it down it'll compact that in there if I were to drill it just to the depth of the screw it would never go in all the way I got to go a little bit farther this may not be far enough so I'm going to play it by ear. I'll screw one, try it. Um, if not, I'll go a little bit farther, but it should be okay. But still, I really get concerned about drilling next to those pipes like that, but um, everything logically tells me it'll be fine. So I really don't know how I ever survived without a planer. I never had one before. So anyways, I want to get a piece slipped down in between these two, all the way down at the bottom, where when I screw that bracket in down there, it will go all the way through both of these, and this will keep the uh, inside from, you know, from bowing together like that. It will keep it separated properly. So I slip that down into there, and then I get some screws through. Then I can come on the back side and start building my wall up to uh, flush with the top. Got my measurements. I was going to go with 24 inches on center. I figured 16 inch on center was a little bit uh, excessive, especially since we're going to have a three quarter inch plywood piece on the back of this. Um, so I went ahead and compromised with 19.2. So I've measured out my spots for 19.2. Use the level uh, to measure down accurately to the uh, base plate. Mine is stopped an inch and a half for the top plate and I've got everything I need to go get them cut. Well, cabinets are pretty much done. I went ahead and got some, was it melamine, I think that's what they call it, just to put it down to give us a nice uh, working surface uh, temporarily until we get the actual countertops in. So right now we can actually go ahead and get the stove put in, everything's hooked up and ready to go over there. The only reason I don't have outlets in yet is because we still don't know what style we're doing in here. We got one of Natalie's little custom um, outlets, uh, switch out cover plates there. But as far as actually the theme of the outlets, I'm not quite sure what we're doing yet. I'm going to go ahead and put the dishwasher in. I did go ahead and buy the sink. So here's my template for the sink. Um, so I may go ahead and just cut that out in this as well so we can have another place to rinse dishes at and everything until uh, the countertops come in. So now Nat and I need to go do some shopping to figure out what style we're going to get. So in the research that I've done, um, there's two and three centimeter stone, uh, granite, marble, quartz, whatever you get. If you're doing two centimeter, then you need to put a half inch plywood down 
And then uh, the only problem that I didn't like is that the overhang is, uh, it's all glued together. And you can kind of see the seams in there. And I've heard about sometimes, you know, accidentally bumping that corner and the uh, seam popping loose. You also, we want to kind of curve this on the outside and you can't curve it when it's um, uh, a glued on seam like that. So that's why these are temporary. We're probably with the three centimeter or inch and a quarter um, stone. We don't know what we're getting yet, if it's going to be granite or quartz or what yet. Um, but that way it'll be able to span over like this distance without any issues. We can do our round part around here without any issues. And then this round curve is going to match the round curve on the bar island or bar over there. So you can go out 10 inches with a three centimeter and it'll support it. And we want to bow this out, so we'll have to put probably a support here and a support there, which is fine. Um, we'll do the same thing on the outside of the uh, little bar out over here. So that'll be the next step for the kitchen, I guess, um, is picking out what countertops we're going to do. Like I said, in the meantime, I'll probably go ahead and get the stove set in place. We can start using it and uh, get the dishwasher set in there and the uh, sink set just for the time being. Okay, today I'm back working on the cabinets. I'm sure you're wondering why I'm wearing a mask inside. Well, Nat and I over the weekend decided that we were going to take a break and go to a concert. It's a concert that I had actually bought for her birthday back in 2019, and the concert was in 2020. Of course, 2020 all fell apart, and uh, the concert got canceled and got rescheduled for this last weekend. So just having a bunch of caution, we're going to wear masks inside 